Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is an easy one, uh, but it's something that I got requested a couple times. So the Tenergy T180 is the charger that I use to recondition and also test my hybrid battery pack when I was working on the 2004. So in this video, I'm going to go over how I used it, the settings that I used, and why I chose this charger over some others. I'll also go over some specs and exactly how you can get the best experience out of it. Because uh, I've seen that question pop up a couple times in the comments. So you ask, you shall receive. Uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So why did I choose the Tender GT180 when I was reconditioning my pack? So a couple things um, that I noticed when I was searching around for battery packs. You probably noticed from the first video in the series for reconditioning the pack, I had a very small Tenergy unit, um, and that actually was a great unit. It did everything I needed it to do. The only problem was it was very slow. The specs I was looking for when I was choosing a charger discharger, which are on the back here, is specifically that discharge power. So here that's at max 20 watts. That's considerably higher than any other charger that is within this price point. I can put the link in the description for this charger, but I believe right now there was a sale on Amazon. It was like $78. Uh, that's really, really good for a 20-watt discharge rate. And then the maximum charge rate of 100 watts is more than I needed. Um, and then the other thing you'll notice is that we have input voltages for both DC and AC, so you can power this off of a wall for AC power. Uh, it's accepting uh, anywhere between 100 and 240 volts, so that was never going to be an issue. Um, and then you can also power it off a battery between 11 and 18 volts, really positioned there for a 12-volt battery. Um, the balance current, balance tolerance, um, charging capability, all that stuff, that's relatively standard as well. Um, the only thing I really looked at here was the charging capability. You see the nickel metal hydride, that's the NIMH, 1 to 16 cells. So the Prius individual modules themselves have six cells in it. So that's well within that range. And then you have PV battery voltage. So we're within um, that as well. And then you'll also notice... Um, we have all these different connectors available on the charging cable. So that's also something I want to touch on as well. This should never be something that limits you when you're choosing a charger because you can always make some uh, adjustments as well. And they do allow for that. Um, a couple other specs on the box that we can note here. So you'll see that we have, um, there's also what I was looking at. So that's the nickel battery cycle. So nickel has that memory effect that lithium ion does not. So that is also why we do our reconditioning and we cycle each individual module. It kind of reconditions the module, removes that memory effect. And then you can see here that we have program data, save and load. I wanted that. Um, and then you also can control your end voltage. So I'll touch on that when we go over the settings here in just a second. Also has a cooling system built in and then it does advertise maximum safety. That's very generic. Um, but in really all that's saying is if you connect the battery incorrectly or the battery's faulty, it will stop the charge, not allow it to charge. So um, overall, uh, I liked the specs, liked what I saw on the advertisement. And then it was really tested when I went ahead and did the actual reconditioning. So I'll go ahead and now show you the settings I used and exactly how I configured the charger to work with the Prius modules. All right. So this is exactly what you get when you open the package here. So um, pretty inclusive. You get a instruction manual, a quick start guide. You also get a stylus, um, which actually has a spot here over on the side of the charger that you can actually store it right in there, which is kind of nice. You can also use your finger to interact with the touchscreen. It's not a capacitive touchscreen, so it's a dual layer. You have to press on it to actually um, to kind of feel the top layer move when you're pressed on it. So it's not super quality, but again, for 70 bucks, you're paying for its capabilities, not necessarily the touchscreen or the display. It also comes here with a balancer. So if you are someone who uses lipo cells or uh, something that needs to be balanced, you can go up to a 6S um, or six individual items in series there. And then you can balance using this that has a separate connector here on the side that you plug that into. We didn't use this for balancing the Prius cells, but that's an added benefit of having a hobby charger that supports multiple different um, chemistries of batteries. Um, you have your banana clips here, so you have a red for a positive and a black for a negative. They have corresponding colors there, so you plug those into your output. And then once those are plugged in, um, you then would hook in. So I actually have these uh, gator clips here, so I had these put on myself. So they give you blank leads that you can use to put in your own custom connector. So that's exactly what I did with these. These are just a lot easier to work with. Um, 
I would recommend these if you can find them. Um, I'll probably post a link to those in the description as well. So these are relatively easy, just used um, uh, these clamp connectors, but you could use probably just about anything. Um, so this is what I use to actually hook it to the battery on the positive and negative side of the uh, nickel metal hydride cell, or module I should say. Um, so anyway, following the quick start guide, just to get you set up, um, the what I did to get started, I connected the AC cable as you see there. I did not connect the balance board because I didn't need it, but the octopus cables as they call it here, this is a banana clip also if you're from the audio world, um, that's where those go. And then you go ahead and connect the battery pack. So in this case, we don't have any of those two connectors here. We actually have the banana clips, so that's where you plug, or the gator clips here, you plug these in. Um, one goes to the positive, one to the negative lead. And then you will plug in your AC unit here. So I'm gonna plug that directly into the wall. And a couple seconds later, you'll see your charger power up. I'm gonna unplug these so we don't need those. Perfect, I'm then gonna grab the little stylus here. And then you can actually choose your battery chemistry. So notice it automatically loads up to nickel metal hydride, but you also support NICAD, uh, PB. You also have uh, instant power. So if you wanna just use this as a power supply, you technically can do that. Um, there's a setup guide. There's also a program select view, memory, LiPo, lithium ion, uh, LiFe, LiHV. We are concerned with nickel metal hydride. So that's what I use. And I'm going to use the cycle function. So if you're just starting out, you'd find nickel metal hydride, you'd then hit cycle. And then you get to define your settings for the cycle. So here it looks like it's defaulting to 1600 milliamp hours. Uh, for the Prius, you're looking at 6,500 amp hours, or, or sorry, 6.5 amp hours, or 6,500 milliamp hours. So to adjust it, I'm just going to select on the 1,600 value and increase that. And you can press and hold like I'm doing here. You'll see that increase. And we got very close. It, it does do 50 milliamp hour increments there, so I'd leave that at 6,500 milliamp hours. Notice our charge current auto defaulted to 6.5 or 1C, one times the capacity of the battery. And then discharge current, I went ahead and updated this, moved that all the way up. You'll notice the discharge current goes to 5 amps. So just doing quick math, 5 amps times our 7.2 volts, which is our nominal uh, voltage for the battery, um, does put us at well over the 20 watt discharge. Uh, of the rating for the charger, but don't worry, you're not gonna overload it. It'll cap out at 20 automatically. And then discharge end voltage. So to calculate this, what you're gonna do, you're going to calculate based off of the discharge voltage of an individual cell times the number of cells in each module to give you the discharge end voltage. So because this is adjustable, you have full control over how deeply you discharge the entire module. So I did some reading on nickel metal hydride cells and the fully discharged value of an any given cell is about 900 millivolts or 0.9 volts. 0.9 times six is gonna be under six volts, but to be safe, what I did, just so I didn't deep, completely deeply discharge them, I believe I discharged to about six volts. Of course, you could go to about 5.9, um, which is what I think some users may do, uh, but I did six and that treated me well. And then to actually do the next level, I'm gonna hit the down arrow here, and then you can choose your cycle modes. Are you gonna charge and then discharge or do I wanna discharge and then charge? So this completely depends on the current state of your battery. I believe for me, I did a charge and then discharge so that way when I did a full discharge, it's gonna give me a correct reading of the estimated milliamp hour capacity right off the bat with the first discharge. And then of course, down below, you have a couple options for the number of cycles. So that can be one cycle, or you can go all the way up. I'm gonna increase that to, I think five is a limit? Yes, it is. So you can do it five times. The delay timer is the number of time between a charge discharge cycle. So the idea here is if the, the individual module gets too hot, you can wait a number of minutes. I think I did five to 10 minutes here in this option. And then you will get 10 minutes of break for that individual battery or that module that you're charging and discharging for it to cool down. So that way you're not overheating that cell or that module there. And then when you're ready, you hit enter. 
and you'll notice when I click enter, nothing happens. So what you want to do, and I had somebody comment that they were not able to see the milliamp hour capacity reading. You want to turn, click on the number of cycles first. I don't know why the charger operates this way, but when you leave it selected on the number of cycles and then press and hold enter, it will then obviously check for a battery and it's going to tell me that I don't have a battery, which makes sense. Um, but if you leave it selected on number of cycles and then press and hold enter, it will understand that we're doing a number of cycles and it will then give you your capacity readings for every single cycle charge. So there it is. So that's exactly what I did for my settings here on the, the charger. So pretty simple on how to use it for this. Um, if I happen into some lithium batteries, I might do a video on that one for how to use the Tenergy for that. But as it relates to reconditioning a hybrid battery, that's really all I had to do with this charger. So super nice charger. I actually had two of these um, when I was reconditioning that pack just because it does take quite a while to go ahead and do that. And um, because you're limited to just one at a time, you can't have multiple batteries connected or multiple modules connected at one time. It only has one channel, which is what you see over here in the output. Uh, it does have that fan. Um, but yeah, each individual cycle took about probably an hour or two. So if you do three cycles, you know, that's going to be three to five hours, depending on how long um, or how, how high your capacity is on your individual battery. So um, there is a couple things I didn't touch on. So there is a DC input. Um, so if you had a, a cable that you could go in there, you could connect some cables for a, a DC battery. There's also an optional temp sensor. So I wasn't able to locate this online, but if, if that's a standardized connector, you're welcome to post that in the comments. And then there was a USB cable. Um, that looks like it's uh, one of those old USB connectors there, which you probably could use to update the unit, maybe connect it to a computer. Again, didn't try that, um, but as far as using it to recondition a hybrid battery, this was more than enough uh, for what I needed. So super cool charger. Uh, let me know if this helped in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos like it, please subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.